The following is a Galactic Network podcast. For more, go to GNCast.com. That's G-N-C-A-S-T-S dot com. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Who Knew and Review, a podcast, as you just heard, from the Galactic Network. So with all my reviews, I'm going to give you the synopsis, I'm going to give you the good bits, the bad bits, the most universal bit, rambling musings, and anything like that that I fancy. We'll then have a short break, listen to a couple of adverts, and then we'll go on with the news. Okay, so I've just changed the, my setup here. So if I sound different, if I sound better, if I sound worse, please let me know. If I sound just the same, yeah, still let me know. I haven't had correspondence for a while. So anyway, the Eaters of Light. A hunt for the lost Ninth Roman Legion leads the Doctor, Bill and Nardole into the middle of an ancient battle that could cast humanity into the dark forever. What is inside the cairn? How far will they have to go to defeat the terrifying alien, Eaters of Light? Okay, not a bad synopsis. Um, Let's have a look at the good bits. And for me, this this could also be the most universal, but these could be interchangeable, really. Because Bill realising and explaining the TARDIS's translation circuits and the subsequent re- realisation of how a species must sound to the Doctor was actually really impressive. Uh, Bill continues to impress me week on week on week um, because she's a sci-fi nerd. Uh, the fact that she gets it really quickly. I mean, it would be the same as popping, I don't know, someone like Anessa in the TARDIS. I mean, she'd just be able to get it just like that. But what's the bad bit, Daryl? Right, well, the bad bit uh, was the monster design. It just, it didn't do anything for me. And, and that, that's really nitpicky. Um, but that is the bad bit for me. But what about the most universal bit? Well, I like personally when things happen in the show. And um, and the Doctor has an explanation for them. I like things like that. Um, so what do I think? What do I think the most universal bit was? Well, it, it's Nardole's realization that the crows talk, and the Doctor's explanation for the crows. Especially with the ending bit. Her name was Cor. Car. I thought that was quite funny. I thought that was definitely the most universal bit. Just little bits like that I really enjoy. So anyway, thanks to a surprisingly long epilogue at the end of Eaters of Light, it feels as though the stage is tantalising now set for what Stephen Moffat's very latest Doctor Who final two-parter is. But let's not jump the gun. Because with the story of this particular episode told before 40 minutes... We're left in the TARDIS, Missy, Nadol, Bill. Wasn't one of those meant to be in the actual TARDIS? Now, I know this might seem like I'm skipping, you know, 40 minutes of the show. And that's because it can be summed up rather quickly. You see, Bill has a theory that she got from a book as to what happened to the Ninth Legion in Scotland. And the Doctor has another, so they have a wager. Then we hear the crow, car! And the, well, actually, on this occasion, the crow went Doc! Tar! And the story begins. Quickly heading underground, it's there that Bill finds at least some of the missing Ninth Legion soldiers. Um, the ones that just happen to be hiding from a creaturey, monstery thing. The Doctor and Nardole sadly find the rest, their bodies disintegrated, apparently in double quick time, thanks to the lack of light. There's also another bunch of people, including the gatekeeper. Um, and it turns out it's far from the first chilling moment of this Doctor Who run. It's they who indirectly led to the slaughter of the Ninth, courtesy of a monster being let across a portal to feast on them. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they're just 
let the portal open and let the Ninth Legion get killed out, killed. Pretty cheery, yeah? I suppose if you are a, uh, a picked from all those times ago, you're used to such utter brutality. The episode itself, harshly, I am going to score at three and a half TARDISes out of five. Now, that's not to say I didn't enjoy it, because I did enjoy it, and I've watched it two, three times since. But I didn't enjoy it enough. It was good. And the fact that it was set with a little bit of truth. Um, the Ninth Legion apparently did go missing. But it still just didn't... It just didn't ice the cake for me. And damn it, that's what I want. I want a cake with lots of icing. Still, three and a half TARDIS is out five is a very good score. But it's just... It could have possibly been better. Yeah. Anyway, tell me what you think. Email me. TARDIS at G- In fact, I, look, you know how to email me. But if you didn't, listen to this and it'll tell you everything that you need to know. Many thanks for downloading this podcast from the Galactic Network. We have so much to offer. Maybe it's horror or adventure gaming. Perhaps you just like to listen to a couple of nerds geeking out. Well, if that's the case, then visit gncasts.com. That's g-n-c-a-s-t-s dot com. And have a good poke around. You'll be surprised what you find. Maybe you'd like to chat to the hosts. If so, then why not sign up to our Slack channel? Or simply you want to tell us what a great job we're doing. That's G-N-C-A-S-T-S dot com. Hauntings, sky sounds, parallel universes, monster sightings, the New World Order, ghost ships, urban legends, mysterious radio broadcasts, and secret government facilities are just a few things we've talked about on Weird World Weekly. Listen to find out what's next. Go to gncasts.com slash weird to listen, find out more, and subscribe to the podcast that discusses the paranormal, mythological, conspiratorial, unexplained, or anything else we think is a little strange and out of the ordinary. Also, Matt's continuing search for turkey recipes. It's all on Weird World Weekly, part of the Galactic Netcast network of shows, also available wherever you listen to podcasts. Okay, so let's do the news. Um, there's a little bit of news. Let's have a look. There's a few items. First off... David Tennant doesn't actually expect Broadchurch co-star Olivia Colman to take the Doctor Who job that he recently recommended her for. It was the tenth Doctor himself who backed the idea of a female successor to the outgoing Peter Capaldi back in February, and specifically asked, um, or suggested that Colman would be a magnificent choice for the role. Hmm. Well, okay, Peter, but... If you said she was suitable and now she's not, what? What? I don't. Oh, I, you know, I don't know. Well, I've got a little another casting job, uh, casting news coming up after this item, and this item's quite a big one. You see, Doctor Who is coming to the big screen in a new documentary about the Daleks. Yeah, you see, clickbait headline. But then again, it's a documentary about the Daleks. Victor Lewis Smith, the filmmaker behind the BBC documentary The Undiscovered Peter Cook, wants to turn his eye to the iconic villains in The Undiscovered Daleks, which will look into their origin and cultural legacy. He'll draw on exclusive archive material and interviews with famous Dalek fans for the new movie to reveal everything you ever wanted to know about the Daleks, including the time they were in that... um, that adult movie. Oh, sad times for the Daleks. Uh, still, that sounds actually really quite good. They are an iconic figure, and it would be good to um, see most, if not all, of that. So anyway, let's have some more uh, casting news. Ah, yes. Casting news. Well, 
My next job is playing the doctor. And with those words, Adrian Lester sent his Twitter followers into a frenzy. But speaking to Digital Spy, the Hustle star insisted he was not intended to play a cheeky prank on his fans. It seems he's going to be playing a surgeon, not the doctor. And I think this is another opportunity missed, BBC, because Adrian Lester would be absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely, hands down, fantastic as the doctor. Now, I've got some instructions from our leader, Dave Nelson. So let's put on some uh, TARDIS landing music. Oh, some TARDIS uh, takeoff music. And um, what we will do then is I will read... Well, well, he's just... He's, you know what it's like. He tells us what to do. Joking, Dave. Don't sack me. OK. So there we go, that's playing. The TARDIS is taking off quietly in the background. If you enjoy sci-fi, aliens, horror films, Doctor Who gaming, comic books, the paranormal, weird things and more, then please consider becoming a partner with us by going to gncasts.com support. And then by clicking on the Patreon link, you see, we don't think you're a listener, a viewer, a reader, a follower... When supporting us, you're investing your hard-earned money, so we consider you a partner. We're in this thing together. Become a Partner Plus and get your name mentioned on our shows, or Partner Pro and have us read your messages. Whatever they may be. Go to gncast.com slash support. Become a partner with the Galactic Network. Wouldn't that be exciting? Becoming a partner with us? I think it would. It's got its advantages, you never know. You could even, you know, do my show for me whilst I nip on my holiday. Oh! Hey! Everyone! GN, the Galactic Network guys! What a great idea! We can get people to do our shows for us whilst we go on holiday. Oh, I love that idea. Anyway, sorry, I digress. Um, oh yeah, what else do we need? think we currently need a media manager. Someone who could look after our Facebook page, our uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram and all that lot. You see, we're not very good at it. We like doing the shows, we like doing the talky-talky, but we're not very good at telling people about news, views and events, you know, in the sort of tippity-tappity real world. If that's the sort of thing that you'd like to do, sort of a, uh, a social media manager... Uh, contact Dave, contact myself, contact any of the team. Um, there is zero money involved, and I know that that's unfortunate. But if you if you've got a passion, and maybe you've got a passion, but you can't you, you can't subscribe to Patreon, then why not become part of the staff? Yeah, there you go. That's what I that's what I'd do if I was you. That's pretty much how I got involved with them anyway. Anyway, more news. Chris Chipdall. Hasn't taken over the reins of Doctor Who just yet, but that doesn't mean he hasn't got his master plan for the series all figured out. Sounds very dramatic. In an interview with Television, the in-house magazine of the Royal Television Society, Chris teased that Doctor Who could get something of an overhaul under his watch. He confirmed, just like his other big TV hit Broadchurch, a series-long arc is definitely possible. I do like a series arc. I miss them. And the final story, and it's one of my favourites. And it's from our friends at Big Finish. As you know, I'm a big, big Finish fan. Uh, I like the audio dramas. If you haven't already, there is a Big Finish audio drama currently on Radio 4 Extra. Uh, get the Radio 4, uh, get the BBC iPlay- Radio iPlayer app and listen to it. It's The Sixth Doctor. It's fantastic. It's two hour long drama. It's perfect. Anyway, so what was I saying? Oh yes, that's what I was saying. Sir Derek Jacobi will return to the world of Doctor Who as the villainous master. Once more, ten years after he played the part, he'll star in a new series of audio plays exploring what happened to the master before he resurfaced in Utopia. Doctor Who 
The War Master, Volume 1 from Big Finish, will follow the exploits of the Doctor's archenemy during the course of the devastating Time War. Yeah, that actually sounds pretty darn good. So anyway, that's all for this week's Who Knew and Review. I will be back next week when we look into the penultimate episode of Series 10. Until then, goodbye. This has been a Galactic Network podcast. For more, go to GNCast.com. That's G-N-C-A-S-T-S dot com. 